Yes, people, Killer Keller here for Street Culture Podcast, live from Arts Arcade, Piccadilly Circus, Television. Um, this is the home of where we conversate with people from the ground on up, starting their humbling beginnings um, in the streets and emerging into pop yeah, culture. Uh, today we are talking to some garage grime veterans uh, that are making a resurgence and a huge wave out there at the moment. From Oi onwards, this is more fire crew inside the place. <laughs> More fire crew now, so how are we? How's it going, man? Oh, How's it going, bro? Oh, we had to get the bigger table out for this one. <laughs> wow. <laughs> how are you guys doing? I mean, it's been a minute since we've hung out, hasn't it? Yeah, it's been a minute, man. Yeah, yeah it's been a minute still, yeah. How's it been for you? How's, how's the journey so far? Boy, it's, it's exciting. It's a, it's a very exciting time to dip your music right now, mm. if I'm honest with you, man. Mm. It's like, when I was talking to you just now about all the, the little stumbling blocks and that, and you just got to, you still just got to persevere Persever, and throw yeah, seed, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. So right now, it's kind of paying off. Yeah, that's interesting, because we, we did go, we did kind of segue in conversation talking about the hurdles and day-to-days, the things that you have to kind of endure as we grow up, mm-hmm. um, yeah, man. they become bigger stumbling blocks than, you know. Than they expect them to be. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean it's, a hard, it's a hard one. You don't even forecast when you're starting out, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. What's your theories on that? What's your feelings on that? Boy, do you know what? <laughs> life is life, is life isn't it? It's, gonna, it's, it's one of them things that like, you get to a certain age and... As much as you want it to be about the music, you gotta understand there's bills to be paid, and, and you got kids, and mm. you're not in the same place that you were in like twenty years ago. That's interesting. You, know, you know, like twenty years ago, you had more time. You know, like time on your hands. Mm. Whereas when you get to the ages that we're at, it's more like yeah, responsibilities. You gotta, yeah, responsibilities. Mm. You gotta deal with life. You gotta deal with situations and stuff like that. So mm. that time that you would have had when you was like, I don't know. 18 to 20, it's like, yeah, it's not, it's not like that when you're in our age, you know what mm. I mean? So, it's total, total, like, you know what I mean? You have to just, I think life's about balance, really, isn't it? Mm. If, 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 if you can balance things, it's always good, you know what I mean? Them times, you just be in a studio. When you're younger, you'll be in the studio all the time. Yeah, like, I'd live just, in the studio. Yeah, I'd just live in the studio. Just churning out tracks, churning out tracks, but now you've got bills to pay and that, <laughs> like man said responsibility so girlfriends things like that yeah. so as much as you want to be in the studio you've got to kind of <laughs> like Ozzy said it's all about balance yeah. you know I mean yeah. with with responsibilities as you get older there's also I would imagine and it's also, of course it depends who it is right but majority of the time you have a different kind of code of conduct street responsibilities things that you know that if you do x y you're going to get z yeah, you know what i mean yeah, yeah, so, yeah. so it, i guess that the, it's a different sort of pressure when you're younger yeah, yeah, definitely. when you're younger yeah. it's what do you, what do you think what do you yeah think? you know it's i feel like you know when you're younger it's definitely more peer pressure for the simple fact that you know you're you're around a certain crowd that you know when you do that you know for example like, get me that crowd, you can't really talk posh around it. Mm-hmm. But when you get to the age that we're at now, I've got mates where I can speak posh to them, I've got mates that I can speak roll to them. You know what I'm saying? So it's just like, it's, like I said, it, it comes back down to balance again in life, isn't it? You've got to know how to deal with, with different people, different situations. So, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? But it's like, more or less, I feel like, yeah, it was more peer pressure on back then because you you got your mates that were like, oh, bro, what are you doing that for, bro? Like, yeah, mm. That's not, that's not, what the music thing? No, no, just just anything in general. Just like if you, mm-hmm. you know, like when you're on the roads and a, a guy might say to you, "Oh, yeah, we're gonna go do this or do that." Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It, it, it's peer pressure, isn't it? So it's like if you don't do it, then you look like the the the, the nerd kind of thing. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. So it's like in, in in most walks of life, you know what I mean? When you're younger, that's 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 what I, I feel like. Mm-hmm. It's a lot more peer pressure than that. Whereas now. It's kind of more easy, you know what I mean? You can do what you want, you're an adult, you can, you know what I mean? So, mm. pretty much, yeah. That freed, freed up a bit more. Yeah, you're freed up. Yeah, freed that up pressure to more. like, keep up with the Joneses when you're exactly. younger. You no, but I, I feel, I feel exactly. like when you're younger, like take away peer pressure, when you're younger, mm. there's less pressure. I think there's less pressure 
uh, when you get older now, yeah. and, and the responsibility. Yeah, but that's with life. But I'm, t- you, we're t- I'm talking about on the, in the terms of ah, uh, you know, like when you're with your mates or you mm-hmm. around with your, your, your friends, or whatever, they would peer pressure you to Into do certain things. things, and if you don't do it, you look like the soft guy. Or, yeah, you nah, know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. it's just like, yeah, that's that's pretty much mm-hmm. well, what, what I meant by that. Mm, yeah, because there is the peer pressure is crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Definitely. And that that does form your that does form your early ages of understanding and climatizing to certain environments and things, dictating mm-hmm. what your, your thoughts on life are and the music that you create. Yeah, you which again, well, that yeah. you know that obviously opens a wider debate of of its time. Yeah. Garage music was popping, drum and bass was popping, some UK hip hop, but the majority of it was street. Street, street, mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. And street often don't follow much music other than whatever's being played whatever's on. Whatever's on the street, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. pretty yeah, much. It's true. Yeah, it's true. How was yeah, it? Yeah. How was it like? What was it like for you, Nico? Like growing, growing up and and having to adapt to such things. Do you know what? I always made music. I felt comfortable with making. I, I never ever actually felt like I was pigeonholed into any one category, and I feel like Ozzy would feel pretty yeah. much the same because yeah. we used to. When when we was doing the whole original like more fire thing, we put out a, we put out an EP and it was we done like a cover of D'Angelo of My Lady, um, yeah we done we done a few like Google that uh, was that Monica as well <laughs> Monica, and, Monica yeah. Ooh, yeah, like we put our little. Yeah, you ain't got to say it to me, man. You know <laughs> I mean? Even that tune, you know that tune. Um, I can't remember the artist, but Walk On By, mm-hmm. yeah. old Walk school Motown mm-hmm. track. Yeah. We done a we done a version of that sort. Of, it was a sample, but it was kind of it weren't grand, in it. Yeah. We were just experimenting with various different sounds. So personally, I've never felt a pressure to just be grime or. Just garage, because oh, yeah. I, I just done whatever I felt comfortable with then, mm-hmm. like, and then I started rapping and that for a bit, and yeah. So for me, it's just been I've never been one to just say I'm grime and that's it. The end. Mm. Cause you know, also you have to realize as well, yeah, is that remember being the age that we're at. You know what I mean? We kind of grew up listening to. Like, you know, obviously we knew UK hip hop acts, obviously, but majority of what we followed was US. Yeah. Whereas these generation now, they're coming up on their own stuff. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Whereas we, we was kind of like the, yeah, like we was checking American stuff, like, mm-hmm. and, and it was so cool to check the American stuff. Whereas the kids now, they they're not really checking the American stuff. No, they're more, more into regional. What's going on here? Yeah. yeah, you get what I'm saying? Mm. So. That's the that's probably one of the reasons as well why me me and Nico we had always come into the game just knowing that now we don't want to pigeonhole ourselves and say yeah we're just grime obviously grime is what we do mm. but we can do other stuff as well mm. like, even the more fire crew album CV it's not fully grime it's majority grime mm. but there's hip hop on there there's yeah, like yeah, yeah. softer kind of garage on there there's that there's different sounds which on is there, what so. the UK sings about. Hey. You gotta be diverse in sound, you know what I mean? Like, that's, that's how I look at it. You, you can't, obviously, you know what you do, where your bread and butter's at, but at the same time, you've got to be open minded to be able to do other things. Even mm. as a musician, it's just good to be open minded. Mm. You know, I, 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 I listen to there's, um, indie songs that I like, there's rock songs that I like, you know what I mean? It's just having that open mind as a musician, anyway. Keep that, you know keep that, keep that cupboard door open. We'll come back to those kind of questions <laughs> in a minute. Um, when you, when you have. Um, a number of hits in your arsenal. Mm-hmm. I said arsenal. Um, where, <laughs> where, <laughs> where, <laughs> um, where, uh, where does that position you in terms of? Hey, you know what? We've, we've already got this in a bag before we even get on stage. And how much does that? Um, how much does that dictate the experimentation of other songs in relation to that? I don't ever feel like we've got this in the bag. Cause that's kind of. I'm talking from a life point of view. Oh, life yeah. point of view. Oh, from a life point of view. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Boy. Yeah, I know. Because if you didn't have it, you, you, would you be none the wiser? Who knows? It's just the thing, isn't it? You make it, certain decisions and stuff like that will make you a lot wiser, 
you know what I mean, like more street wise or just yeah, it's, it's pretty mm-hmm. much. What, what would you say, Nick? Would you would you agree there or? Yeah, it's a techie question to be fair. I, I think I feel like yeah, you know what I mean. It, them that that will make yeah, it makes experiences in a sense of you know what I mean. You you, you always it's gonna it's gonna do something for you. In a, in a sense of, uh, you know what I mean, you're going to learn from that situation or, you know what I mean? Mm. So it's, it's, it's pretty much, yeah, that, is, that is an important thing, really, because it determines what you're going to be or what you become or, you know what yeah. I'm saying? And you guys, the tour stories alone must be absolutely bonkers, especially on the breakthrough moment, you know, oi, drop in, boom. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Everyone wanted to know where Stratford Rex was with from outside London. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> bro. Exactly, bro. Where, where, where? Bro. Where? Always, bro. <laughs> Stratford Rex was at Club Aztec as well. Yeah. That was used to be another <laughs> venue temple. Yeah. But yeah. Mm. But, yeah. Wow. <laughs> give, some, give some tall stories at the time. I mean, it's, 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 it's crazy to think because nowadays you don't have those immediate portals that allow you to um, be fed through mm-hmm. the bangers. Yeah. You've got to kind of really go at it and find, you know, the diamonds in the rough. Exactly. Yeah. But this was like cooked, ready to, ready made and you guys were just running it. Run, yeah, Because yeah. like, even the whole way as well, like, with, with the whole Oi thing as well, it's just like, when we made Oi, Nico, Nico told you this, we never made it with the intention of it doing what it done, innit? Mm. We just made it yeah, no. for the guys on the block, in the hood, like, just to be known in the area. Oh, yeah, yeah, what's he be? He's an MC, you know what? He goes an MC. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that, yeah. Was, that was what the thought was process at, at the beginning. But mm. obviously, when it done what it done, yeah, it was it was a big wow factor because you were all thinking, wow, like, from, you know, youth club settings to now we're doing, yeah. touring the whole of England. Off, 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 yeah. You get what I'm saying? So yeah. It's, yeah, yeah. It's crazy. We were making, we made a fair few like songs before Oye was even thought about, or the way Oye came about was just that like, a man just put the track on and he, he just asked the question, like, what's that hook that Lethal's got? And from there, it was just. It was a, it was a madness. It was a madness. Lethal made the made showed us his hooker and that, and then me and Ozzy we made our own. And yeah. like I said, we were making tunes previous to that, and we were just making tunes in a studio in in a bedroom, like in our platinum four or five. Mm-hmm. We were just making tracks with no no real. We weren't trying to make a hit, so when it did actually land, and do what it did it was it was like wow yeah because uh, you was youngsters wow. you yeah was exactly I was, I was like when I come out you was 18 I was 17 yeah, yeah. see I was the same age yeah, yeah, that's yeah, mad so was long long time ago man yeah. <laughs> that's crazy <laughs> that's mad <laughs> when you say that well I'm, I'm 22 now so yeah. I'm, yeah, I'm 25 now yeah. <laughs> yeah, well yeah and these things have a way of making an impact did you realise um uh and not just Oi, just moving on into the the years. Did you, did you, did you realise how much connectivity your voices and the songs had, of it? You know, of that early beginnings. Because you just like you say, you're doing it in the, you, you know, in the youth centres or whatever. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, you're just doing your thing. Yeah, you just do your thing naturally, innit? You're not like like as like we keep saying. It wasn't when we're doing it. We're just doing it as a hobby, and yeah, it's like yeah, like. Can get into this, you know what I mean? Because even my first musical experience was in the RE class that mm-hmm. like the teacher never turned up to. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That was in year nine. You know what I mean? The RE crew, you know. Yeah, big up Miss Evans if, if, if you're still alive, but yeah, yeah pick you up, same way. Yeah, mm-hmm. But pretty much, you know what I mean? That's That was because she never turned up. So we ended up, um, this is me and Lethal was in the same school. Mm-hmm. So we obviously, this is when they started mixing the classrooms. So I was in a certain class, he was in a certain class, so they'll mix all the different pupils together and then they got a class. So they put us in a RE session. He falls down there, this girl there. Recipe for absolute it's all, carnage. So yeah. basically, the teacher didn't turn up, so they was like, oh, well, you've got an hour to do what you want, watch TV or star, whatever you want to do. Then she left the room. So 
that's the way we all said to us, so yeah, you know what? Let's do something, innit? Let's like yeah. try to do something like musical, see if, 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 where it's at, like if we get ready. So or sick. Not. And then, yeah, pretty much, you for went and squeezed a six, like an eight bar or something, got a good reception. I squeezed an eight <laughs> bar that I'll probably, it might even have been a lyric that I've probably heard and I just went yeah, on, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Yeah, big so shout out, Skibber. Yeah, 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 So I basically just done that and got a good reception. And then from there, it's like, that's when it was like, oh, you know what? Maybe there's something, yeah. like, there's, there's something in it that's interesting. The voices, you know the voices, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's differentiating. And I think yeah. a lot of, a lot of um, artists, protect uh, group artists, yeah. they, they don't consider those, you know, the three dynamics yeah, yeah, yeah. and how that translates audibly so that people can differentiate between people, right? Yeah. yeah. No, but there's people that kind of do, because the other day, it was actually at, at um, Box Park in Shoreditch when we went to do <laughs> this event. I was talking to someone and they was, they kind of, the way they, they connected to the track was through the voices and it's like Ozzy had the deep voice. Mm. <laughs> Apparently, I had the husky voice. Yeah. And it was just like, that's how they connected. Connect, yeah. And it was like, yeah, man, your flow, like, the husky flow, it just worked for me. And Ozzy's voice, like, deep, deep and deep yeah, like, the, girl, the yeah. girls loved it, you know what I mean? Very <laughs> right. You get what I'm saying? <laughs> distinctive. Like, as soon yeah. as you hear their voice, you know, you, know, you ain't got a question you know uh, who's who. Who's who. Yeah. Yeah. You already know. Yeah, 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 that's mm. right. Yeah. Um, but it also it kind of, in my mind, it it it's assembled in the way like a f- football team would be in a way that you got your striker midfield defence and then, you know, the, the secret weapon. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? And the way that on entry you guys came in, I mean, you were the secret weapon on the third verse of Oi, without question. But <laughs> I'll, it's like, I'll admit that. Yeah, you know, <laughs> it was like, I'll yeah, okay, okay, yeah, I mean, that's a, oh, we have to reload, reload that again. <laughs> we have to play it again, you know. And that, I think that's the the, the mastery of. Of when songs really, you know, go yeah. clear. You know what? Yeah, back to the point that you called me earlier about. Um, obviously, when you put out, you know, what I mean, like, I feel like most hits get made without thinking it's a hit, because if you think it's a hit, mm, it's gonna miss. Then <laughs> it's gonna be a little misconception. You're gonna be like, oh well, yeah. I feel I thought this was a hit, but mm. it's not. But then the way we done it. We never thought it was a hit, we just thought it was a tune. Yeah. And then it just done what it had to do itself, innit? Yeah. You know what I mean? Naturally. So if I could give a word of advice to people that are just come into music, mm-hmm. just have fun, make music, and it will happen naturally. Mm. You know what I mean? Do you think people have time to have fun nowadays in music? Well, oh, they never really got time to have fun, That's but you know, I'm not going to say fun like that, but just don't come into it with too much expectation. Serious play. Yeah, it's yeah, got to be yeah, a. Yeah, yeah. Everything yeah. with intentions and you're yeah. doing it for the yeah, yeah, for the yeah. love and enjoying it. Exactly, yeah. and it's even more competitive now as well. No, nah, but I'll be honest with you. <laughs> <laughs> the most recent tunes I've made that have come from just having fun with it, to be fair. Mm. Like, not thinking too hard about it. Sometimes not even thinking about it at all. Mm-hmm. Like, one of the best lyrics I've written this year, and I'm going to just say it, I wrote it while I was sleeping. Like... <laughs> I wrote it while I was sleeping. What? I woke up and I was like, hey, you can you swear on me? Yeah, go for it. I you was like, what the fuck was that? <laughs> and then I was like, no, I need to write that down. So I wrote it down. And as I've written it down, I was like, no, I don't really like that too much. So I changed it all. Like, probably about 80% of it, I changed it. But the whole idea that like, it just... I was I was in a, I was in a sleep mode, like literally. I woke up at seven o'clock in the morning, like what the fuck was that? And I, <laughs> do you know what I mean? And that's I've learned to just have fun with it and just not be so. No, I need to I need to make a banger. I need to make a verse. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. Back yeah, then that's I was. A, that's a different type of calling, though. Yeah, it's a different type of calling. That's meditative when state. You get that, you, you're yeah. Soon, yeah. Like, Different level of spirituality. Yeah, 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 that's what I mean. You're writing lyrics in your in your sleep and remembering it because you know usually when you're asleep, it's kind of you're in, in in the dream realm, isn't it? So mm. sometimes you can't remember what goes in the dream realm. So for you to be able to remember that, that was really supposed yeah, to. Yeah, that happen, was trippy. It? It was actually trippy <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? But to write it pretty much word for word. Word for word while I was sleeping, like word for word. 
And then I didn't. And if you don't like, if you don't like it, it takes you like, it takes you ages to change something again, in it sometimes to change a lyric, mm. and, and that's from a awake state of mind. You don't like it, you just, you're trying to change it. Change nah, it. that don't work. That don't that work. Don't but right. mm. I realized I didn't like it, and I changed it all, and I changed it in a matter of like about fifteen minutes. Like, what was it about? What was the lyric about? I right, saw so a track called. Um, Rumours. That, that's coming soon. Yeah. Nice. That's coming soon. Yeah. Right. Bangers on the way, people. Yeah. Come on. We've been cooking. I've heard been the cooking. chips. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Big up Swish, by the way. It's so Dallas. Come on. Yeah, yeah. He's yeah. He's serving him up, man. Um, so, Rumours, what does that... I want to know more about what the lyrics were. What's the, what, uh, what's the deal? See, no. We were even laying with the missus and it's just like, oh, good pen, pen, No, nah, not even. I was on my own. I was laying on my own. It's just a... That was just basically a track that, um, I swear it was you that yeah, recorded it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because right. what well, it was, I, I went and recorded it beforehand, did it? But obviously, I, it's already been stressed and ego that hmm? the track, we want to do the track. But I just said, you know what, let me just go and do it, and then I'll show him how, how it all sounds. He heard it, and he was like, Oz. How do you respond to that? I, said, I was like, what? Like, <laughs> right, yeah. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> in fairness, yeah, in fairness, that we're talking about having fun with lyrics. That actual lyric came up because I was pissed off at my next door neighbour in the sense of he's just making bare noise. Just, all night, just TV lad. Noise pollution. I mean, noise pollution. <laughs> so it woke me up at like, it woke me up at five o'clock in the morning. So now I'm just vexed. So now I've gone back to sleep. And while I'm sleeping, I've, I must have just gone into some next mode. I don't know why mm. that track even, I don't know, if you're pissed off at your neighbor, you don't think about, oh, I've got to write a tune yeah. about rumors. Mm. It just doesn't, it doesn't correlate. But I feel like your energy works. just, just went to that if, rather than it going to anything else. It just said, yeah. And people talk about this, you know like Quincy saying? Quincy Jones. He's always talking about like how that's a higher state of creative being. That, mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. You're, and you're just a vessel of that. Vessel of it, yeah. Like that. Yeah. That's highlighted more than anything in in this subject. Yeah, yeah. It's true. Because I've even heard, uh, you know, I've come across stories as well of like old school artists that have had s- songs written for them. <laughs> Like they've written their self, yeah, but yeah. they were saying I didn't write it. Mm. <laughs> yeah, wrote itself so, in a so, way. Yeah, you get what I mean? I didn't write it, but I wrote it kind of thing. Mm. So when they say that like, higher state of consciousness mm. or something, mm. went into their mm. mind and, and written the song. And you see it on the videos. One one particular producer that I feel holds that as a himself as a conduit is like Scott Storch. Yeah. Yeah, just seems like he just, just grabs the piano. Yeah, he's, 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 yeah, a he's a killer with the yeah, yeah. when it comes to the piano. Mm. He, <laughs> Do you know about Kelly King, though? To, to me. Listen, he produces and spits on his own music, his own shit. That yeah. Kanye West, bro. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy. Kanye's like, Kanye is like my, one of my biggest <laughs> inspirations <laughs> for this. Yeah. Thing, mm-hmm. To be fair, Kanye West, if you're going to say a producer slash artist, the first person that usually comes into my mind would be Kanye West yeah. because... Yeah, that's yeah. him, isn't it? That's or the Jay Dillers kind of or thing. Or the Jay, yeah, Jay Dillers. Kind of, and, yeah. It's rare to get like a 100 percenter, somebody that is able to take it from big inception to f- finish line. Mm-hmm. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Oh, it's true, yeah, 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 it's true. 100%. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? 100%. What's the process for you in, in working? Um, do you know what it is? Like, for, so for me, like, there was always like problems at home and stuff, innit? Mm. So, like, growing up, I, and I'm the oldest child as well. Mm. So, like, there was no one to really speak to. So, like, music, either writing lyrics or produ- producing, that was, like, my only way to express myself. Mm-hmm. Other than... To, do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, mm-hmm. internalising everything, you mm-hmm. took it out there. Yeah, so that was, like, my calling. So I even learned to produce... I think it was, like, geography. Like, I didn't like geography or history. So I used to go to my friend's house. <laughs> and Wow. And he had, he had finished school by this time. So I should just go to his house and then, but he produced as well. So he was just like, yeah, sit down, I'll teach you everything. And then 
kind of just went from there. See, I ain't got that type of patience mm. to learn how to produce. Like, I, I don't I think many even, people do, but not many people do. I can't even have, I can't even listen to producers speaking in their lingo to each other. I just fall asleep. Yeah. As far as I know, <laughs> it's about yeah. waves. Yeah, yeah. I know it's about the waves. You've got to understand frequency. the waves. Yeah. None of this side chain saturation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know you are, yeah. Synthesizing. What, what do you, all of them, what, Simpsons. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then you remember you got producer and then you got recorded as well. Mm. That's, that's another thing to learn. Mm. Yeah, yeah. There's different yeah. types of producers. Yeah. So, like there's beat makers, there's yeah, producers. Yeah. Like, there's mm. two different. That's two different worlds. People don't realise it when you're beat making. It's just terminology, isn't it? Yeah. And using that wrong terminology will mm-hmm. differentiate you from a whole different category of production. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. I mean, is it sample that. finders, beat makers? You know, mm-hmm. producers in my mind, or at least the conventional ones, are the ones that you know work with the artist and study their craft and bring mm-hmm. what they want as an idea to fruition. Mm. Well, could, could Dr. J be an example of that? Exactly that, man. Yeah. 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 Timberland. Timberland. Yeah. Oh, For yeah. real. Timberland. Yeah. Even Missy Elliott. Yeah. Her prime as well. she, she was on the producer side of things as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Timberland and her. Mm. Yeah. But I rate, those, I rate those MCs and artists that do get behind the board mm. and have a crack at creating something even in demo form mm-hmm. because that energy I mean that I mean it goes back to grime you know that energy of just raw guttural that, that energy sees things through mm-hmm. and that yeah. energy I've, I've come across it on my Instagram today that energy has gone to Bay India <laughs> really oh, did you I, see I, that I see a guy oh, spitting my over one of um, Spiral's beats what and I think got I saw that yesterday you really know, you, you got the forward yeah. really like pull up Select that. <laughs> <laughs> what did you see the video? I, I rate that. Grime is international. <laughs> like if you close your eyes, you think it's random. Mm. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Because yeah. yeah, even like, because he was speaking in his, in his language, he's spitting in his language, mm-hmm. and then when he got the pull up, he started speaking out in English. Like, yeah, pull up, select that. I was like, oh, I love that. Yo. I see uh, there's, a, there's a number of like drill artists in America that are adopting English. Accents. Yeah. You seen that? Okay. Yeah, I haven't seen that yet. Yeah, 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 that's, yeah. that's a whole nother that, trip. Yeah. That's that that in itself. The influence of British music. Yeah, but you know yeah, what? I'm I'm well, way, yeah, I tell you what's kind of helped it as well recently, the the Central Sea and Little Baby song. Because that's created a viral thing now mm. where <laughs> Americans are saying stuff about Central Sea and then English people say stuff about little baby, you know what I mean? So that's mm. just automatically built a, a viral situation there now. Yeah. You know what I mean? But yeah, they, like, when I come up, I just look at it as Americans didn't really take us serious. Innit? No. You know what I mean? Do you think like, they, do? they do now, though? Do you think they do? No, 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 no they Still do now. now. I feel they do now. I yeah. feel like they will listen a, to I, what's I, I, going I, on here and they're like, yo, these cats are not... Yeah. These cats ain't... Like, even like the music you know sound today... I do. It stems from... That, like the UK... Like the sound today stems from UK jewel. Obviously, we got influenced by grime yep. and the whole Chicago thing, mm-hmm. but we kind of turned it into something of our own, mm. which, apart from grime, which I feel like at that time, they were just paving the path for the industry, mm. in a sense. Mm. But these lot didn't really have anyone to look up to. Nah. But we do, as, as the younger generation. Mm. Yeah. So it's, it's easier and harder at the same time. The but thing is, we, we had people to look up to, girl, but it's just more or less... They, there was no one really here to look up to, mm. in a sense of the yeah, 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 the yeah, two yeah. packs, the biggie, you get what I'm saying? Like, that's who we kind of raised up on, locks, you know what I mean? Jay the Kiss stars, people, mm. them, you get what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. That's who we... Oh, Noriega. And Noriega, yeah, yeah. Kapoor, you get what I'm saying? That's who we grew up. To an extent, I hear that, but... I looked up to and, yeah, the people like the Skibber the Shabbers, like, yeah. yeah. that's yeah. the kind, that's the people that inspire me to even want to try and MC in the first place. Yeah, like, that, that'll, be, saying, cause that'll be the influence here. You know what I mean? Like, back in the day, it would have been more the jungle MCs and the, the yeah, man. MCs, you know what I'm saying? Because it started from somewhere mm. over here. It yeah, started yeah. from somewhere, and that's, yeah. for me, where it started from. Mm-hmm. For, for a lot, man, that's where it started from. But, I couldn't, scene. but me, honestly, I couldn't say the first... first um, obviously, for me, I probably listened to hip-hop before I listened to jungle, innit? Yeah, that's interesting. So that's yeah. why I would say... That's what we were raised on, mm. you know what I mean? Because yeah, before I, I did, I didn't know about jungle when I was young. Mm. But obviously, hip hop 
is what I first listened to in R and B to a degree. <laughs> you know what I mean? Okay. So it was like yeah. But that kind of ma- that kind of adds up to the more fire dynamic, you know. Because if he's both in the same stuff then it becomes an echo chamber. Yeah. There you go. I love that. There you go. See the yeah. insights we're getting on this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Um what Britain's really good at doing it, and it's a thankless task, I might add, um, is re-exporting. We're always the people that n- nurture a creative idea and build it to a place and then send it over there and make money off it. That's kind of the deal with America and England when it comes to music and culture. Yeah. yeah. We, they, they get it sent over here. We then mess with it. You know, did it with rhythm and blues and rock and roll. Mm-hmm. Did it with punk. Yeah. You yeah. know? Mm-hmm. House as well. Yeah, house music. Yeah. yeah. This originated in Chicago. Yeah, that's Chicago. Uh, yeah, yeah, Detroit. Yeah, yeah, in Detroit, yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's mad how. Was it Detroit? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. I thought it was Chicago. 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 Actually, when was it? Detroit the, House, Chicago. House. When yeah. did it, what yeah. year was it? Was it the, the 70s? It's like the early 80s, I think. Yeah. Like 80s, 80s. But they were coming through off the back of the kind of Kraftwerk sound. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Back okay. in the day stuff. Yeah, okay. yeah, but that's why, obviously, as, as you know, you've got the US house and you've got the mm. European house, you know what I mean? But mm. US house is obviously the original one, isn't it? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah everyone yeah. else has kind of done what they've done with it, so, yeah. It's funny how the, the underdogs in the US, they never... It's the same with history in, in America as well. It's never mm. really... She said, Knock that building down. You yeah. know, <laughs> you know, they've got they, you no know, history. And it, the same can be said, I mean, you know, you've got... Obviously, your figureheads, yeah. but hip hop was the first culture that really held their court and say, "No, that's a legend." Mm-hmm. You know, treated in the same way jazz musicians, mm-hmm. and yeah. I feel like UK do that really well with yeah. the heritage. Yeah, because then also as well, you will also have like the early hip hop heads saying what was their inspiration, and a lot of them were, or from what I've seen in interviews and that, a lot of them would have said, "Oh yeah, you know what." Uh, um, because obviously they say hip hop's got a bit of reggae in it, a bit of soul, you know what I mean, mm. soul. Like it's, it's got like mixes in it. And mm. some of them would say, yeah, I, I, I listen to uh, some of the producers, old school producers say, yeah, I made my beat off listening to like reggae music mm. or listening to you know what I'm saying. Mm. So they're inspired by sounds mm. as well. Mm. Even the, even the early hip hop producers. So it's just pretty much it's always a cycle with it. Someone's inspired someone to do something in that sense. Mm. Exactly. So, yeah. but I don't care what no one says. Like the mm. moment the UK, oh you doing that? You doing a reggae hip hop thing? Are you? Mm-hmm. Like UK just weren't having any of it. it like <laughs> well no that's us. Thank you very much. And you know four wheel drive straight yeah. into into hip hop and rap. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, yeah. That that that's our culture here, exactly. and we just ran with it. Yeah. Incredible, incredible moments in music. But then you you got my my mate M um, dot R he's he's kind of yeah. doing the yeah. you get me yeah. the dark sort of thing so he's yeah. and I love it when Buster flips it a little bit goes into the patois you know just yeah, yeah. 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 but he, that's that was his early sound that was his early sound mm. isn't it? even mm. from when he first came he kind of always had like he he's one of the first rappers that I, I, I see personality in. You know what I mean? Like, obviously, some before, they were just more about rapping. Mm. When Buster came, personality kind of came into it. You get what I'm saying? Mm. And then that was yeah, funny. Because come with a whole split style yeah. and the whole flip. Yeah. Character. Character. Yeah. Character. Yeah. character. Yeah, yeah so he, like he, a cartoon character almost. Yeah, exactly. Mm. And even when you look down to his videos, his old school videos, him and Missy Elliott, they kind of, that's their style, isn't it, of mm. having character and, yeah. That whole Hype Williams era of music, Video making as well. Mm-hmm. That was super. I'm sure it was for you guys. Well, yeah, it was yeah. a one hell of an it was observation. Amazing. It was amazing, man, to see his Hype Williams videos at that time as well. You just, you just be like, this, this video budget must be like at least five hundred k or hundred k or you know what I mean. He, he had some crazy videos. Then he make all the Luda videos. Yeah, yeah, yeah most of his yeah. and the big yeah, hands yeah, and that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just yeah. iconic yeah. moments. The things that stay in your yeah. mind in your head forever. Um, yeah, I saw a. Uh, interview with Buster and he was talking about who his influences are. It was only a little 40 second reel, but he, you know, he held up the sound systems, Tipper Ivory, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. Daddy Freddy, like all these, yeah. and again, more UK. Mm-hmm. There you go. Do you know what I mean? Crazy, yeah, oh, is it true that he was, he used to, he used to live here? Buster. I heard that story. I heard that, um, Scumforth or something like that. Something like that, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. I heard that story. And then he moved to America. <laughs> yeah. What, so he's English? I don't, feel, I don't know if he was born here, but he might have come here when he was young, lived there for a few years, and then went back okay. to America. That's what I heard. Still, you guys ever contemplated working with a particular 
hero of yours, people that you wanted to work with in the studio that you just say, yo, A ASAP in time? No. I think if, you, if you're talking old school, um, I'd, I'd, I'd like to work with. I think the, the, I'd love to work with Dr. Dre if I could, because mm -hmm. he's a super producer. Yeah. Um, you know what I mean? Timberland as well. Crazy. You know what I mean? The, 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 well, if you, so many, so many like people that I can say yeah. I'd love to work with these people, you know what I mean? But if, if it comes down to a producer, I would say definitely Dr. Dre mm. would be the first choice, if I could say, yeah. If someone said to me, you can work with any producer you want now, just pick one, mm. definitely be Dr. Dre. Nice. Definitely. Mm. I've never really right, thought about it. Because I'm an artist and producer, yeah? Like, not that I'll more or less work with anyone, yeah, but there's, I've got a lot of inspirations, innit? Mm. So, yeah, too many names, but like UK wise, like you see, you see when I was when I was growing up here, yeah, I used to go to my cousin's house in South. I never had Sky in it, and I used to go there every weekend to listen to to more fire crew. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> well, I love that. Yeah. Was was channel U, yeah. uh, yeah. man yeah. up yeah. till yeah. late, man staying up until channel channel U locks off. We're up, and then the next day, like we just sit and wait. We don't really care about, but oil. Glorious days. Growing up, like that real. was that was the song for me. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? To be so fair, like, I spent rather. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I'm saying? So like, the fact that we're here today, mm -hmm. is, blessings, is, is, blessings, is, blessings, blessings, more than blessings, man. You know what I mean? More yeah. than blessings. But like, even me, it's it, it amazes me. Mm -hmm. it, it's even up to today, being a part of that song, it amazes me how long that song's lived on for. Yeah, it, it really does. Yeah, it really does. It, 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 it <laughs> continues on building with your legacy in time. Yeah, because you know what I'd say, yeah, like in the UK, like there's 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 been lots of people that have done great stuff, yeah, mm -hmm. but I can't think of too many names, yeah, where their songs held long timeless longevity. Full grown mm -hmm. adult, basically. Yeah, <laughs> like from from yeah. from that era there, yeah, like off my head. I can't name you another song no. that still bangs today. Don't get me wrong, like, man can still appreciate other songs. Other songs yeah, but that song, I can't really name you another song. I think from a different generation point of view, um, and you'll, you'll like it when I say this, General Levy, incredible. Yeah. 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 That's the yeah, home. Yeah, In my yeah, mind, yeah, 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 you yeah. bang that. If you guys... That choose back to back. Mm -hmm. It's game over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. that tune. That tune's gone through shot the ages. Yeah, 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 yeah. That tune can shut that any event. Yeah. Yeah. It don't even have to be a jungle event. It no. can be just a normal event. Yeah. You play that, it's going off. And it's the same yeah. with you guys in yeah. Norway. Yeah. Um, I've got a more kind of personal question here. Um, Nico, you, you're you're very passive and chilled. Um, how we love you, and <laughs> and there's a lot of you know a relationship in in a crew mm -hmm. that's f few and far between it stands the test of time and i'm noticing even in the conduct the way you communicate i mean some people go to like you know pr school for this shit yeah. do you know what i mean like back and forth toe yeah. to toe talking back you know without over talking in each other and mm -hmm. you know creating that kind of friction how do you sustain that long-term relationship in a crew this Stay out of Nico's way. You gonna explain it, Nick? If you got an issue, you just talk about it, innit? Like, yeah, that's simple. Of course, of you course, just talk about easy, it. The easiest way. Yeah. Is that a general or are you actually asking that now? <laughs> no, no, no. no, 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 no in general. In general, right, in general right. man, like, general, man. I don't know, like. Ozzy might do something that I might not necessarily agree with, the same way I might do something he don't Got agree you. with. Mm -hmm. But you just talk about it collectively, innit? Yeah. Don't let things drag out. Don't let, you know don't let it boil, you know what I mean? Mm. Just get rid of it before it boils over. That's mm. how we usually do it, you know what I mean? So if we have, you know, a conflict of interest, whatever, we just kind of just nip it in the bud there and then, mm. you know what I mean? Because, mm. you know, some people will just say it build up and build up and build up mm. and build up and then when you, they do explode it's just like there's no turning back no coming back so we just anything like that just gets nipped in the bud ASAP yeah 
Lisa. That's very honest. I mean, not a lot of relationship, you know, um, you know, personal relationships, yeah. lots of mm. families. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I just look at it as just, you know what I mean, you're always going to be better on the cooler side than on the, you know what I mean, on the hotter side. Yeah. Than, you know what I mean? Just, just be as cool as you can be. It's yeah. not easy, but... Just be as cool as you can. Be, like, I've known Ozzy for what? what I mean. I've known you for like 20, 25 years. 25 years. 25 years. Like, maybe a bit longer than that. Long time. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? The first time I met Ozzy, he was walking into my house party. And I, I didn't even. I was like, what's, he doing? what's this guy doing in my house? <laughs> and hold it was. What's he doing in my house? And then, like, obviously. Oh, he's the best way. He's left and that. But a couple years later, we've ended up in a crew together. Like, in sound training. And imagine, yeah, when I went to his house party, yeah. First, he didn't want to let me in because he didn't know who I was in it. Mm. So I understand that part. You know what I mean? But then when I actually did get in, I just turned well, we, we turned best friends, bro. <laughs> About <laughs> after an hour or two, me and him were just in the party, just chatting for most of the night. It just shows you so how, 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 how life is as well, you know what I mean? Sometimes, like, life just deals the hands for you. Like, it's almost like you're just moving and... It just, it's played out for you. Exactly. Yeah, man, it's exactly. true. It's true. It's all, I, f- I just feel like everything that's meant to align will align. Do you get what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, even even how this track with Kelly came about, it's, it was all alignment. We met at an a off-licence in North London. In, um, we Edmund, went there. Edmund, to, yeah, Edmund and Tottenham. We went there to do a little Big up crew. A freestyle thing, yeah. We went to do a little freestyle thing. And he was one of the people in there that stood out for man because hmm. of his delivery and that. And then he's kind of, he didn't realise that it was Nico and Ozzy B to an extent. <laughs> so he's like... Bro, man's in the <laughs> shop talking to these lot. Because, bro, obviously, you see, I haven't seen these lot for time. But I'm looking at Ozzy, yeah? I'm... <laughs> The whole time I'm talking to him, I'm like, bro, this guy look like Ozzy B, yeah? <laughs> but, but me saying it, yeah, he might, he might, he might, he might feel man taking the piss. He's probably, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's probably heard it before. Oh, look at that. So man's in the shop chilling with chopping it up. No, 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 no. So they're leaving now. I'm like, bro, you look like Ozzy B, you know? And then Nico's like, bro, that is Ozzy B. <laughs> so then I'm like, hold wow. on. So that's so that's me. That's me called then. <laughs> so I've, I've got I've gone home. I checked my Instagram. I said, bro, that's it's them, actually man. them, man. <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? But we were just generally just chopping it up. And, and so the hats weren't a giveaway. But any, st- no, no, we wasn't have these hats no, I was just checking. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't even have these hats. At the I time. get it. I get it. Yeah. But do you, you must get it all the time. You must. Yeah. Yeah. You it's must get it all the time. Even just just being going out. You know, even like, obviously it's not as much as it was when you know at the peak of it, but I still go places and people recognise me. Yeah. I mean, I, I might be at a bus stop. Someone looks at me, they're like, they yeah. look again, <laughs> they look a third time, and they come over. <laughs> oh, you know what? You look like someone. Like, oh. uh, for example, I was at jewelry service a couple of weeks ago. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I couldn't do jewelry, for, jewelry service in peace. Mm-hmm. Basically, because I thought I was just going to be a normal person in jewelry service. <laughs> they were this. Never yeah. worked like that. I had about five, six people. What's it be, it? What's it be, it? <laughs> oh, my wow. God, you're in jewelry. Like, like, like you don't have a normal life. Yeah. Like, this, is what, this is the thing, but this is what I, I explained to them. I said, listen, I live a normal life, yeah? Let's look at it as Superman syndrome, I call it. Mm. Yeah, in the daytime, I'm Clark Kent. At night... I turn into Superman. Yo, I love that analogy. <laughs> yeah, I love it. <laughs> you got to go that route because, you know, the popularity of you guys. And, yeah, you could be just in any situation. Yeah. Sometimes it might, I guess it feels often like people are double-checking and you yeah, forget yeah. who you are. Yeah. And you're like, why is he looking at me like that? Cause that's the thing. I don't even, you see, like, because I know how, how it goes, yeah. When people stare at me for long, well, back in the day, I might have looked, looked at it different. But when people stare at me for long these days, I just gather it as that uh, they recognise me. Yeah. You know what I mean? I don't ever start thinking nothing negative. I just think, yeah, he probably knows my face or something. Yeah. So I'm not going to start being like, oh, what are you looking at? <laughs> if you're younger, you know the younger. Yeah, if I was younger, you'd naturally be like, oh, mate, what are you looking at? What are you still, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it's like, yeah, it's pretty much just just get on with it. And if they do ask me and they notice, then I'll admit, yeah, I am that person. But if they don't notice me <laughs> and they don't ask, then I'm not going to admit it. I'm going to just be who I am. 
And it's testament to your legacy and the fact that you're still out there making music, boys, and killing it. Exactly. Out on the road at the moment, doing shows. Exactly. Whoa. Yeah, man. See, so um, I've, always, I've always fallen into carnival quite easily. Yeah, carnival. You know what? Saying that, I haven't been carnival for how long? You went there recently, didn't it? Bro, yeah. I went carnival last year. I nearly got crushed on Portobello Road, man. Oh, dude, that's the worst. I've been there. That's the one Horrible. thing I can't take when people have got no behaviour. Because <laughs> if everyone just formed the orderly... Do you get what I'm saying? Just walk, just be like... Normal. 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 Yeah, just, just but for some reason, money. someone wants to start pushing, then everyone's pushing, start now pushing. people are pushing back, mm. and we're in front of, like, this food stand. So it's got to a point where there's so much pushing, I'm holding onto the barrier, like, boom, holding the barrier, <laughs> and I'm pushing back, yeah, to make sure that this barrier don't don't collapse. They're, they're behind the barrier holding yeah. their rice and peas in oh, there. Just, you know what I'm saying? It's mad. Yeah. All over the place. So it's like, I was, I was the only thing separating their rice and peas hitting the floor. <laughs> and and the, you get know what I'm saying? It was mad. And I'm just holding on for dear life because I was hungry as well. How, <laughs> how, how, much, is the, how much is the plate there, they say? For you, yeah, probably 20 yeah, pounds. Yeah, so, uh, <laughs> give him a plate yeah, for free. I don't know if he wanted that rice and peas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Feed him, feed him, feed him. Like what he's there, just hold it together. You know what I mean? That's when they made me pay a tenner after that as well. Not even a thank you. I was proper holding up for dear life. Open the back. But that's that's the things I can't really to take about Carnival, man. But you know what? Saying that, I might try and go this year, though. Because I feel like mm. I, I, should, I should go. It's so there It's been so it. long. Yeah. You know what I mean? I feel like I do need to kind of just go there. Yeah, yeah. Just I'll take the to... hassle for the day. Yeah. <laughs> no, got, if I go and go to where the floats are, it's a, it's a lot more civilised. Oh, yeah, way yeah. more civilised. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Instead of being in the mix of In it. the mix and certain parts of Carnival. I can't be yeah. in the mix. Can you imagine if we dropped that Carnival? Oh. Yeah, it. Well, it does, but you know, you guys jump up and do it. You know, Rampage, big up Rampage. We got Rampage. Yeah, we got Rampage. Yeah. Yeah. Go off. <laughs> generals, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So lots of shows and lots of new music. The time of the sun is back in, and uh, and you're climbing. Yeah, <laughs> Still lovely, climbing. Man. Yeah, yeah. That's what it's about. Wicked. Ozzy, Kelly, Nico. More fire in the building. Come on. There you go. Street Culture Podcast. At it again. Tell a friend to tell a friend. Thank you, gentlemen. Take Peace. care of yourselves. Peace. Peace. Peace.